Embarking on a vacation to a beachfront property in Florida with my friends was an adventure that unfolded in ways beyond our anticipation. Our journey began tightly packed into a small car, anticipation building with every mile. Upon arrival, we discovered our rental was a charming yet modest abode nestled directly on the shoreline. Sandwiched between the vastness of the bay across the street and the inviting sands of the beach at our backyard. The neighborhood was a blend of architectural grandeur and simplicity, with our dwelling falling into the latter category, offering just enough space with one bedroom for each of us. The road on which our beach house stood was dotted with homes that enjoyed a generous amount of space between them, affording us the delightful sense of seclusion. Throughout our initial unloading of belongings, the tranquility was such that not a single vehicle disturbed the peace. Inside, the house presented a comfortable and clean environment, its decor enthusiastically embracing a seaside motif, complete with a decorative surfboard positioned unassumingly behind the living room TV. This space opened up to a back deck that offered an uninterrupted view of the ocean's horizon. The deck itself was merely an extension of the beach requiring only a brief descent to merge with the sandy expanse. This setting promised the beginning of an unforgettable getaway. We each selected our own bedrooms upon arrival. Luckily, I secured a room overlooking the beach. After unpacking, our immediate instinct was to head outside and relax by the shore. Eventually, we all took a dip in the water and even had a game of football. We spent several hours enjoying the beach seemingly the only occupants aside from a distant older couple. Later, we ventured out for dinner and then explored various bars in the downtown area. By the time we returned via Uber, darkness had fallen. Despite the late hour and a bit of tipsiness, we decided to head out to the beach for some late night football. As I dashed to retrieve the ball, having missed a catch, something caught my eye amidst the water. Only the moonlight reflecting off the ocean allowed me to discern it. What on earth is that? I exclaimed, realizing it was a person standing waist deep in the water. My friends, noticing my reaction, glanced over and also spotted the figure. It seemed a bit peculiar given the late hour, well past midnight. Nonetheless, we shrugged it off, reasoning that if a local wished to take a midnight swim, it was their prerogative. Later, we relocated to the deck, where we lingered over beers until exhaustion crept in. Gradually, everyone trickled indoors to retire for the night, leaving only my friend John and me. I couldn't help but intermittently glance toward the spot where I had previously spotted the mysterious figure in the water, driven by curiosity. Eventually, during one of these glances, I discerned someone standing on the beach. They seemed to be facing in our direction, an eerie sight that sent shivers down my spine. Could it be a neighbor? I hesitated to jump to conclusions, but the resemblance was unsettling. Despite our attempts to brush it off, John, positioned to face the figure, noted that they remained steadfastly focused on us. I rose from my seat and followed John's gaze, confirming his observation. Hey, everything okay over there? I called out, feeling a pang of unease. John shot me a questioning look, to which I could only shrug in response, uncertain of what I expected. Yet, the figure remained silent, adding to our discomfort. With a sense of foreboding, we retreated indoors. Travis and Liam had already retired to their room, likely succumbing to the effects of alcohol. John and I decided to follow suit, eager to recharge for the forthcoming day. It was relatively early, perhaps around 12.30 to 1 o'clock a.m. But after the day's events, we were all exhausted and in need of rest. After completing my bedtime routine, I retreated to my room. Before slipping under the covers, I glanced out the window, hoping to catch a final glimpse of the ocean. However, my peaceful moment was shattered by a chilling sight. Someone standing in front of the back deck, their gaze seemingly fixed on the house. It felt as though they were staring directly at my window. The figure appeared masculine, judging by their slightly larger build. It was unmistakably the same individual from earlier. I called out to John, but received no response. 
In a panic, I rushed to his room, pounding on the door until he emerged. Urgently, I guided him to my window to witness the eerie scene, but to our dismay, the person had vanished. Desperately, I insisted that the person had been there, frozen in the same spot as before, right in front of our deck. John took my word for it. We decided against venturing outside to investigate. After confirming that the mysterious figure had vanished, I closed the blinds tightly. However, despite my efforts to settle into bed, I couldn't shake the lingering sense of unease. Who was that person, and why were they lurking around? As I tossed and turned, attempting to drift off to sleep, my thoughts were abruptly interrupted by a sickening sound, the unmistakable knock of a fist against the bedroom window. A wave of fear washed over me, causing my insides to constrict and my heart to plummet. I lay motionless, paralyzed by terror. Moments later, the knocking resumed, this time lighter. I dared not open the blinds, unable to summon the courage. The words, who's there, hovered on the tip of my tongue, but I refrained from uttering them. Instead, I bolted into the living room, screaming for everyone to wake up. One by one, they emerged from their rooms, but when we checked, there was no one at the window. All four of us ventured onto the deck, switching on the lights and scanning the beach, the front and the sides of the house, but found no trace of the intruder. John and I recounted the chilling events to the others, who had missed them while asleep. That night, we left the backyard lights on, hoping to ward off any further disturbances. The next morning, filled with curiosity tinged with a hint of anxiety, John and I approached our nearest neighbors to inquire if they had encountered any peculiar nighttime visitors. To our surprise, one neighbor recounted a disturbing incident from just a week prior. A persistent knocking on their door late at night, with no response when they inquired who was there. Though they wisely chose not to open the door, the resemblance of their encounter to ours sent shivers down our spines and added an eerie dimension to our stay. Determined not to allow the unsettling event to overshadow our trip, we spent the day embracing the tranquility of the beach, exploring nearby towns, and immersing ourselves in the local nightlife. Thankfully, the remainder of our stay unfolded without incident, and we departed the following morning. Nevertheless, the memory of that mysterious figure and the chilling knock lingered, prompting me to wonder what might have unfolded had I dared to peer through the blinds. Two years back, while returning from a family gathering late at night, I found myself on a lengthy two-hour drive home, unable to stay overnight due to work commitments the next day. The journey took me down those quintessentially eerie roads flanked by dense foliage, much like the ones you'd see setting the scene in a thriller film. Roughly 45 minutes in, an overwhelming wave of fatigue hit me, the kind that sneaks up suddenly and insists on your immediate attention. Despite my best efforts, no safe haven for a rest appeared along the secluded stretch. Reluctantly, and perhaps recklessly, I decided to pull off the road. Nestling my car behind some bushes, I aimed to conceal it from any passing traffic, which, though infrequent, was not entirely absent. I checked the time. It was 11.22, and then succumbed to my exhaustion, hoping for a brief, inconspicuous rest. Later, a scratching noise stirred me from sleep. Glancing at the clock, it read 11.50. The noise ceased within seconds, and overwhelmed by fatigue, I opted not to investigate, drifting back to sleep instead. My rest was again interrupted, now at 12.40, by the same unnerving sound, which persisted this time. The idea of an animal curiously investigating the car crossed my mind, but its return, nearly an hour after its initial departure, seemed odd. Peering into the rearview mirror, I caught a fleeting view of a figure disappearing into the woods. In that moment, my thoughts raced to the infamous hook-handed killer from urban legends, who terrorized a couple in their car, leading to a fatal outcome when the man ventured outside. Overwhelmed with a sense of urgency, I made a quick decision to leave immediately. Barely a short distance ahead, 
As I rounded a curve, I noticed a car parked on the roadside, its driver's door wide open. Curiosity led me to slow down to check if anyone was inside, but it appeared empty. Glancing in the rearview mirror revealed nothing at first, but suddenly, a man charged around the bend, yelling and demanding I exit my vehicle with intense fervor. Without hesitation, I accelerated away from the scene. I never encountered him again. The lesson learned? It's not wise to rest by an isolated road. Following a night shift at Stop and Shop, a colleague and I were headed to our cars when a black pickup truck suddenly pulled up alongside us. The occupants, a man and a woman, presented a rugged and unkempt appearance, with the man featuring a mustache, beard, cap, and a cigarette in his mouth, and the woman's hair and facial appearance seeming neglected. They effectively blocked our path, and the man, without leaving his seat, politely asked if we had any change to spare for gas. In response, my coworker rummaged through his pockets, finding two quarters to hand over, while I contributed a dollar, hoping that would encourage them to move on. However, after briefly inspecting the money, the man looked up with a hint of dissatisfaction and remarked, I'm gonna need more than that. We both apologized, explaining that was all the cash we had on us. The request was met with a silent acknowledgement from the man. The encounter left us a bit unsettled, emphasizing the unpredictability of interactions in seemingly mundane moments. Both my colleague and I were visibly anxious, especially as we noticed the woman's mischievously grinning demeanor from the passenger seat. Opting for a swift exit, we maneuvered past their vehicle and hastened to our respective cars. Observing the pickup truck making a swift turnaround, I wasted no time starting my car, shifting into drive, and quickly leaving the parking area. Initially, it seemed they were tailing me, but I managed to elude them. Seeking refuge, I stopped at a nearby gas station and reached out to my coworker via text to confirm his safety. He assured me he was unharmed. Despite hoping that was the conclusion of the ordeal, the sudden appearance of headlights pulling into the gas station suggested otherwise. The pickup truck had returned, its driver attempting to obstruct my exit by positioning in front of me. In a more alarming turn, the woman passenger brandished a firearm, beginning to roll down her window. Acting swiftly, I shifted into reverse, navigating out of the parking lot in haste. A bullet struck my rear window during my escape, causing it to crack but not shattering my resolve. I evaded them once again, reaching home safely. Upon inspection, I discovered my vehicle bore two additional bullet indentations. Reflecting on the incident, the realization of how narrowly I escaped a potentially fatal outcome was unsettling. The incident underscored the unfortunate reality of encountering dangerously unhinged individuals, a stark reminder of the unpredictability and potential peril inherent in everyday encounters. Thank you for joining us on this chilling journey through three of the scariest real horror stories. If you enjoyed these tales of suspense and intrigue, don't forget to leave a comment below sharing your thoughts and experiences. Give this video a thumbs up if it sent shivers down your spine and subscribe to our channel for more spine tingling content like this. Stay tuned for our next thrilling adventure. And remember, the darkness holds more secrets than we can imagine.